speak a lot about leadership. Who's yeah. your favorite statesman or the statesman you really admire the most? You know, there's a man there by the name of uh, Rashid. He's the prince of Dubai. Mm. For me, that is the statesman. You know, why I'm saying the statesman, you look at people who only have the desert and the water sure. as the resources for their country. And then he changed that country with those two resources. Sure. And today, they have taken the world. Sure. You know, so he's the statesman to me. I don't care, he might be a Muslim, but he's a statesman. He's thinking about his people. Sure. He's thinking about the next generation. Mm. And he has become a great example. One of his statements, he will always say, you know, there is nothing impossible in their vocab. You know, as the Arabs, the word impossible does not exist. Hmm. Now, it breaks my heart to look at what we have in, in Africa, sure. the oil, you name it, the gold, the, the diamonds. But we can't even build something better for our children. Yet these people with two resources, desert and water, they've transformed Dubai. That is the state. Sure. It takes a leader to do that. Wow. When, when you read his book, you, you mentioned something very outstanding about uh, different projects that um, he will oversee in the, in the nation. Do yeah. you want to share thoughts around no, that? No, no, yeah. You know what he does? He does not just give projects to people. You know, him, himself, he would wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, and go and just to assess, you know, the place, what is happening with that project. Sure. He does not just leave it to the people, you know, but himself before, after the prayer in the morning, and then he will go to the site, check the projects, you know, that is involved in to make sure that everything is done. One of his principles is that every project that they start, it must never be beyond six months, sure. you know, so less than six months. So they will take a project, a big project, and they will finish it in six months. And he wants people to be accountable as well to him. You know, sure. and not only to the people, but to him. So he's there and he will tell you that we, I want my nation to be number one in the world. Mm. And then he's living that vision and then for the people. Amazing man. Amazing sure. man. Sure. If you want to encourage yourself in the area of leadership and then put some money aside and visit Dubai and look at that place with a perspective of leadership, and then your leadership, mm. you know, um, systems will never be the same. And in the meantime, you can just Google the pictures and just feed yourself, which is what I'm doing, <laughs> Fundis. I will not wait for the money. So I'm taking the pictures yeah. and while I'm putting the money aside. Now, you yourself, you're an amazing preacher of the way to Fundis. Is there a preacher that speaks into your life? Yeah, yeah my, I do have... The preachers that will visit there time and again, you know, the youngsters and uh, who are coming up very well, I'll take that and there. But the person who has been um, um, uh, more inspirational in my life now, it is Dr. David Jeremiah. Okay. David Jeremiah. And uh, I want you to look at the materials of this man. Hmm. It's an old man. What I love about him is that he has experienced, you know, things in life. He's a Baptist preacher. He's very sound. He is old. He's educated. Sure. He is very smart. And uh, when he delivers his messages, very simple, mm. straight to the point. He is sound, politically sound, spiritually sound in every area. David Jeremiah. And um, you can bless yourself now with one of his uh, study Bible. He has just released a study Bible that took him around about 50 years. You know, and uh, now it takes time. You know, you can tell sure. for 50 years he's been preparing this uh, study Bible. Mm. The beautiful thing about that study Bible is that it also allows the technology of today. You know, you can capture some things and then it can put you, can take you to one of his sermons and all mm. that. Beautiful uh, study Bible by David Jeremiah. The second guy, and then that will be Dr. Uh, Tony Evans. Okay. Tony Evans. And all these guys are old. They are 75 and above. And he also, in, he also released his uh, study Bible as well. Wow. And um, amazing preachers. I don't know 
maybe because I'm from Baptist and both of them, they are Baptist preachers. <laughs> uh, but I love the content. I love the, the way they do things. They are very sound and uh, they are very solid. So as a preacher, uh, if you would want people who can also give you some materials that will be relevant for you as a leader, visit those two guys. I promise you, visit the other ones, but you need Dr. David Jeremiah and Tony Evans in your study that will take your leadership to another level. Amazing. Mar Maruti, in, in the recent municipal elections, you raised your hand to be on the ballot paper. What was the thinking process behind that? And for a mind and a, a, a thought that is here, is Ref SC um, launching into politics? I was crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you, you, you know, what actually happened? You know, I, I strongly feel that I've, I've, I, I heard from God. Over the years, what has been happening, there was this wall of stereotype okay. that has been standing for years to say Christians are not supposed to step into this. Hmm. I mean, even Christians themselves. We, we felt politics is for the politicians and it's not for Christianity. Hmm. And I felt the Lord saying to me, you need to break that wall. Hmm. For me, it was not even about winning. It was about breaking the wall. Hmm. You know, and wish it was a great challenge to say, um, here is the pastor who is successful in ministry. You know, you've got everything and then now you are stepping into this why. And I felt the Lord says, if I'm going to take an ordinary person who has not achieved, who has achieved anything, they will look at him and say, he is hungry, you know, probably is trying something else. But a person like me, I'll draw an attention and then to, to the mass out there. All right. And then and be able to break that wall because I felt the Lord wanted me to break that wall of stereotypes to say there's no evil in politics. Hmm. Politics, it is clean. It is people who have made politics dirty. Sure. And should I say we have allowed people who are dirty to step into a clean position and mess up, you know, with mm -hmm. that position. At the end of the day, our people sure. are suffering. So I had that call. I sense in my spirit the Lord wanted me to step into that so that and the body of Christ can look at this and say, if my table has done this, you know, that means there's no evil here. There is nothing wrong. A young person who is sitting here who wants to step into politics, they need to know, you know, this is doable. Sure. And then there are fathers in the country yeah. who are really, really behind this. Because I grew up in the church. I mean, in the church, they will tell us straight away, isn't it Satan? Umbang Azuelo. You know, don't even think about this thing. Serve the Lord. I mean, the Bible school I went into, we were never prepared about this thing, that you are the man of God, preach the word, forget about the things of the world and all that. But as I continue to grow, I realize, no, 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 no. This is not the right thing. Somebody has to fix this thing. So yeah. the main thing as I'm answering that question, I felt the Lord wanted me to break the wall of stereotype. Sure. And I want to tell you, that wall has been broken. That wall has Amen. been broken. Amen. And a lot of people now, the church is more interested in politics. The church now, they, 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 they speak out, mm. you know, and they are prepared to take this thing to another level. I think you've answered a question I was going to ask around a, a global outcry. Many people are saying um, the church preachers, forget about politics. Just preach the word and pray. That's what you are called for. But how do politics affect human beings, and in particular the church? Maybe let's also define the word politics or All a right. politician. Because sometimes we allow the world to define things, you know, the way they want us to understand it. Okay. When you look at that word uh, politician in Greek or, um, or Aramaic, it simply means a good citizen. All right. A good citizen. Check it. A politician simply means a good citizen. Hmm. So these people were supposed to be a good citizen who are pushing the affairs of other people. Hmm. But they messed up with the word politics to a point that when you hear the word politics, it's like a twin brother of the devil. Hmm. 
You understand? Yet it is not. It's supposed to be a good citizen. A Samaritan, a good a Samaritan. Was a politician. Was a politician. All right. You know, because he saw somebody was wounded there. Mm -hmm. And then he came in and said, you know what? And then as a good citizen, let me take care of this person. Take him to the inn and told the guys there, take care of him. He bandages wound and all that and that. That is a politician. Politicians should do exactly that as good citizens. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, those people who are supposed to be politicians, they've taken a big set. Mm -hmm. And then criminals and crooks. Mm. They took that position. Mm. And what we are doing, Rena, we are sitting in the church, we are praying for a good man. Lord, give us a godly man. Give us a godly man. Give us a godly mm. man. Praying Where? for the criminal. Praying to be for a, a, a criminal to become a godly man. Yet godly men, they are in the church. Instead of taking the position and taking the nation to another mm. level, we are praying for them. It's not going to work. Sure. Ah, come on, that was powerful. You can clap again. There is this key statement that is featuring a lot in your messages or sermons in the past three years. And allow me to read. You can't sit in a bus driven by a drunk driver and expect to arrive to your destination safely. Or That's, even arrive at all. Yeah, I mean, that speaks to a church of Jesus. Don't mm. you think so? We step into this bus. We take a back seat. Speaking in tongues, we are praying hoping that the driver who is totally drunk out, you know, he, he, he does not even have an idea mm. where he's going. You understand? And we are sitting right there and we are hoping this guy is going to take us to our destination. Mm. This is what we have done as a church for years. Mm. Sitting in our buildings, praying for criminals. Eh? I don't want to mention their names. Mm. You look at this and say, this is a drunk driver. Mm. And then here am I, I'm sitting and I'm hoping that this guy is going to take me to my desti destination together with my children. So the point was that it was a point of challenging the church of Jesus to say, church of Jesus, enough is enough. We cannot sit in our comfort zone and sit right in the back seat and hoping these guys, they're going to take us. And that's what we do. Mm. We come into the building, nothing wrong, but we worship, we, we, we are okay, we are in the spirit and all that and that. Come month end, the bills are up. No electricity. Mm. You know, nothing is it's working. Mm. Interest rate, Papa, are going up. Electricity went up 18%. And we have been praying. Mm. Give us a godly man. They don't care. He's just a driver. Wow. Sobering, I hope, to all of us this morning. Maybe let, let me backtrack a little bit. Muruti, are there biblical references of political activity or political leaders? Actually, Mungai, here we are because... 70% of your Bible <laughs> is more about politics. 70%. Sure. Sure. We spoke about Moses here. If you don't believe in politics, just get rid of the whole book of Exodus. Get rid that, that's politics. That is politics. It is God who is concerned about the well-being of his people. Mm. He is raising a leader to go and deliver his own people. You understand? So the whole of Exodus, you go to Numbers, it's more about governance. God is talking about the principle mm. of governance, how people should, should govern the mm. book of Numbers, mm. the book of Leviticus. It talks about the principle of the law, mm. how to establish law and all that. I don't want to talk about Daniel. Sure. I don't want to talk about Joseph. When the country was in a mess, when the country was in a mess, sure. you know, God raised Joseph. He came up with solutions you know, the, the, the economic systems sure. in that country. He said, listen, for us to survive in this famine, let me introduce Amatin Staff, by the way. Tin sure. Staff were introduced by Joseph. Mm. You understand? Bill Dong was introduced by Joseph. Mm. Refrigerators were introduced by, by, by Joseph. 
just to help you. Remember, it was the first seven years of plenty, mm. okay? And the, first, and the second seven years of famine. Mm. You know, that when you have a lot of meat, a lot of food, and then you must preserve it. So he came up with those things. He came up with the dry fruits, you know, dry fruits. Dry, you know, it was Joseph who came up with those ideas. Mm. And then who brought the system, economic system of Egypt, you know, to be at that level. That is why Egypt is not at the level like other African countries. Mm. Because of the impact of Joseph that it had then. Sure. Let me take it to, to Nehemiah. Mm. That was political. That was political. Mm. That was political to a point that after rebuilding the walls, the guy he goes in, he begins to deal, you know, with the crooks in the country. Mm. You understand? He deals with the crooks. He takes the priests, put them into their rightful position. Those who were robbing, using the wrong scale when they were selling meat, mm. he was punishing them. You understand? Sure. Now, I'm telling you, my scales, they are totally out of order. Mm. Nobody's dealing with those things. Sure. You understand? Nobody. It's a government work. You understand? Mm. It's what God wants us to do. But the church of Jesus, we have distanced ourselves. We think God has called us just to do church, you know, to pray for the people and to collect an offering. Really? Mm. Is that a call of God? To sure. collect an offering, preach a sermon, and mm. pray for the people and say, God has called me to do that. And yet there's a mess outside. Mm. I don't know. Wow. I'm itching to go to the questions. My phone keeps on ringing here. Um, a lot of questions are coming through from this. Ref, in, 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 in a year's time, 2024 national elections are around the corner. What do you think is the role of the church as we approach these national elections, this critical moment that is coming ahead of us? What yeah. is the role of the church? I know the big question actually now is that who are we going to vote in 2024? People are concerned about that, even the body of Christ. And I've had people, even other people, just sending messages and saying, Muruti for president, Muruti for president. Forget about that. <laughs> I think that's a big question. Mm. But I strongly believe that uh, God has already worked some things out when I'm away. There's a new law that has been passed now, you know, of independent candidates. All right. I'm trying to answer your question in a different, different way. Okay. What is the role of the church? I want you to see that, that God already, for the first time in 2024, you will have independent candidates stepping in. And my prayer is that God will give us one strong independent candidate come 2024. A godly man, you know, or a godly woman, I strongly believe. I'm busy working you know, behind the scenes. I know that God is going to give us one, you know, in 2024. The person that we're going to point at him and say, here is the person that mm. we can trust and all that and that. Mm. And uh, so those things are happening. So keep on praying, church. The first thing is that let's keep on praying. Let's pray for God to give us Moses. You understand? Yeah. To give us Moses for 2024. But at the same time, what is the role of the church for 2024. Hmm. Here is something that I want to make you aware of. Over 16 million people who are qualified to vote in the last elections did not vote. Sure. 16 million. And you look at the people who voted, it was around about 8 million. Hmm. And the ones who took power they took power would run about 2.5 million people. Sure. So something is wrong here. Mm. We don't even have to convince the, the group that has voted last year or a few years ago. We just have to raise a new breed voters. of voters. Mm. Let's raise a new breed of voters. That is where the church comes in. Sure. Pastors Right on this platform, mm. speak to your people, especially those who will be turning 18, 19 next year. Mm. These are the people who can vote better. Lababanye, seba corrupt. Seba negezo, ama food parcel. Ama 350. Ama 350. 
But guess what? Matender, Abanye Sinabula is on twenty. We are told. Yeah. Uh, they get very angry. They, they, their blood, Babchela Gatli, Bala is on twenty. Good to my blood is so, 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 a color. Yeah. You understand? I'm not interested on those. Yeah. I'm interested on these youngsters. You know, their future is at stake. Mm. We need to speak to them, empower them, you mm. know, to vote right come 2024. Mm. That is why. The other thing that we can partner with church, with, with the churches, we've got um, a project that we are running, you know, of raising devoted citizens. Mm. You know, we're literally raising devoted citizens. Upasta Mangan is one of those guys. Yeah. He's going around there teaching people how to become good citizens. Mm. We can partner with you. We say, let's raise. And it's not only about raising voters. The citizens, as an mm. they don't even know the simple principle of crossing a traffic light. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. You know, they don't know what Mali Green or Red, I must stop. They just cross. Mm. Because when I was young, I was taught when it says Red, when you see that person there, you know, you must stop. Basic things. Mm. So the Church of Jesus, we have a role. You know, to begin to teach our people right on the pulpit. Tell our people that we need to vote right. We are accountable for the future of this country. So that will be my take. So we've got a role to play. I think you've already answered a question by one of the leaders, uh, Benjamin Dizello, who was saying, how can we involve young people and prepare them for the elections? So there is the answer. Let's start having conversations with our young people. You can come to us. We give you devoted citizen material. And, and we help you. I think that question was answered. Yeah, we, we can make those, those copies available. So yes. what we have done now, we have summarized the book, you know, and then to, to the level of the teenagers. So it's a small booklet now. And then somebody can just read that and they know. Let me tell you, after reading that book, they will be convinced that come 2024 and then they just need to be a different citizen. So we can make those copies available. You know, we're not going to sell them. We can just give it to you and then you... You give it to other people. But I also need to say, there are some good people there and um, in these political parties. And the other role that I'm planning to do, which is the meeting that uh, is actually outstanding. There are people that I want to put together. You know, your, your Herman Mashaba, Musi Maimani, and uh, you've got this guy now of uh, uh, Arise Mzansi, Mm -hmm. and uh, you've got uh, Bongani Baloi, you know, and which I still don't understand why these guys, they want to split the votes, mm. you know, come 2024, you know, because everybody wants to be a leader, everybody wants to be a president, mm. and the truth is, it's going to take time for all of them to be presidents, you understand? So they need to gather, and then probably, let's look at this one, who is the maybe more older, you understand? Come together. Submit under one guy, man. You understand? Mm. And push one agenda. Mm. Because their policies are the same. Mm. And then after all, almost all of them, they are from DA. <laughs> <laughs> Muruti, you are answering a lot of questions that are here. And you'll agree with me, some of your questions are answered already. Um, you are a man led by the Spirit of God. I mean, you are answering every question I'm reading here. You've, you've touched on it. How can the church come together and unite to, fall, to formulate one direction yeah. and one voice in politics? You know, we need to pray when it comes to that. Because if we don't unite, we're going to find ourselves like a church in Babylon. Hmm. Like the children of Israel. If the church does not unite, which is my biggest fear... And then this year in 2024, mm. churches are doing their different things. We were like more united during COVID because we had one enemy, <laughs> and so we had one cry, you know, and we're so united mm. because the devil was one. We're fighting one demon. The moment they gave us that permission, mm. everybody went to their own corner. Now what is happening? Everybody's in their own corner. We have started building our own empires, our own things in our corners. Mm. We are back to where we have started. And if we don't get it right, right now, mm. it's going to be a big blow come 2024. We're going to go into this Babylon again mm. for another five years. 
I am not prophesying a doom. But I'm telling you, if the church is not united, the next five years hmm. will be very tough. For the church. For the church sure. as well. Sure. I'm telling you, you look at the bill that is about to be passed, the hate speech bill hmm. that is about to be passed now. Hmm. We were busy appealing to other churches. You know, say your voice. Contribute. You know, make a statement. Hmm. We are busy prophesying, delivering one another, you know, in our building and all those other things. Yet there's a bill now hmm. that if you say anything that is going to make somebody's feeling or to feel bad, they can actually open a case. You can go to prison for eight years. Hmm. Just because somebody's going out there and say, you have hurt my feelings. Now, feelings. you always hurt their feelings. Eh? You know, even the, what you call a conviction, yeah. you know, and then it can be you have hurt my feelings yeah. when they are feeling convicted. Let me tell you, you're not going to say anything about homosexuality. Hmm. You're, going, you're not going to say anything about each gender. You're going to wake up one day and then you said you are a boy and a girl. Somebody said you have hurt my feelings. If we don't come together, so. it's going to be tough. I'm saying to us, let us unite like never before because we need one another, mm. both as a white church and a black church. As a matter of fact, there's no white church, there's no black church. We are one church. And if we don't unite, I'm afraid, Basil. Sure. All these empires look that we are praying for, we are desiring, all this will be nothing. We need to unite mm. and take this government. Can I also say something? I know you have not asked me a question. <laughs> I just feel I need to say this. You know, when, when ANC was in exile, it was a government in waiting. All right. They had their policies in place. So there were a government in waiting. They mm. knew that when we take over, mm. we're going to implement these policies. And they came in, they implemented their policies. Mm. DA, it's a government in waiting. Mm. They have their policies. They are ready. They are ready. The mm. day they win, they're going to implement their policies. EFF, mm. it's a government in waiting. Yeah. The day they take over, they're going to implement mm. their policies. And we know some of the policies. We know that the first thing they, when they, they come in, the borders will be open. Forget about it. You understand? Mm. You like it or not, we know this is part of their... They are a government mm. in waiting. Mm. You also have another government in waiting. Islamic government. So. It's a government in waiting. The day they take over, mm. Sharia law will be implemented. Will be implemented. Mm. You've got the rainbow nation now. Yeah. You've got the rainbow nation. Is what the LQ what, what, L what, what, yes. plus. <laughs> it's a government in waiting. They are a government. You go to US, this guy you can tell all over the world. Yeah. They are a government in waiting. They are united they are just like this. They are very smart. They've mm. got a lot of money. Mm. They push their agenda. You understand? Mm. They push it even to us. But, by force. But, but, but they are pushing it by force. Mm. The day they take over, mm. they're going to implement their policies. You like it or not, they will tell you, you are not allowed to say to your child is a boy or girl. They've got their rights. You know, to choose their gender when they are old. Don't tell them. Your worshippers must you, be. Your, your worshippers, whatever. Mm. They're going to put it aside. I want to ask myself. Don't you think a church is also a government in waiting? Without policies. Eh? With their policies. Yeah. We have our policies. Yeah. But here we are with our policies. We are praying for ANC to apply our policies. Yeah. While they have their policies. Mm. City, apply our policies. Mm. 
They care less about your policies. Yeah. Mm. They're not going to take your policies and apply them there. Mm. They must apply their own policies. When uh, you must come into government and apply your policies there. Mm. Don't push somebody to apply your policies. Why should I apply your policies if I'm, I'm in government mm. and we are not in government? Mm. So forget. Sure. That's how it works. Unfortunately, the church of Jesus, we are not a government in waiting. We are a government sleeping. And so, scattered. So. That's a painful part of it. Rev, there's another question. Elections campaigns will be opening very soon. The politicians will be knocking at the doors of the churches saying we want to address your people. What advice would you give to the leaders as those um, politicians are knocking on their doors? No, uh, two weeks ago we received a letter from, uh, from one political party. We received a letter from the National Office of EFF to say we want to bring our provincial leadership uh, to church. We want them to address the church. They, we want them to come and have a fellowship. And we also want to be given a chance to address the people. We answered, we said the church is open for everybody. And uh, you are welcome to come and worship with us. Unfortunately, you're not going to be given an opportunity to address our people. We're going to pray for you as you have asked for a prayer. And then we're definitely going to pray for you. And they came. We prayed for them. But they never addressed our people. How can I go to the doctor if I'm sick? And say to a doctor, he lived by seven side. Let's go. You can't do that. You can't do that. I visit these council meetings. You understand? When they are in parliament, yeah. I can't go to parliament and get a little bit of No. You sit there. Yeah. You sit there. Even when you make a noise, they even rebuke you. Who would remember you are a visitor? Yeah. You cannot make a noise. So, so why, why, pastors? Why, 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 why do you want to give them? Why do you want to give them? Do they give you a chance in their rallies to address the people? Take your rightful position. Stand. Mm. And don't do what you're not supposed to do. This side, there are no hands. Are you touched? Bafundis. Oh, Nishail. Okay. Mfundis, maybe I ask the um, last two questions. One, one question here says, Mfundis, we have a lot of Somalian shops, or maybe let's just give it a broad name and say foreign, for, or shops led by foreigners. And they are giving poisonous, fake food to our people. What, what, what would be the, the, the approach on this one? Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? My, my thoughts is that, well, as much as the government has to play its part, but to be honest with you, we cannot allow everything and to be done by governments. This is where, as citizens, we need to play our role. Hmm. As citizens. You know, during the apartheid time, the crime was there, but it was not too much crime. Hmm. Because we had street committees. We, we were so united that at night, men will go around and be the security of the community. Mm. But today, everybody, we are minding our own business to a point that people can come into our township. Nobody gives them permission. They just come in. They do their own thing, sell drugs and all that. Because the men in the community, they are not visible. Mm. It is time for us to be good citizens. Mm. It is time for us to be good Samaritans. Let us not have this very same attitude of a priest who passed by and mm. the Levite who passed by when a man was wounded. Mm. That is the type of these churches that we are running today. We are minding our own business. I want to challenge us. The best thing to deal with that, because if we're going to say, let the government deal with that, which government? Mm. 
because they have their own problems. And possibly they're benefiting from that Maybe same they're benefiting. System. Maybe yeah. they're benefiting. It is us as the community. Mobilize some men. Mobilize community. Address those situations. If people are selling things like that, close those shops. Mm. As the community, you know, the power of a community. What we have done now recently, by the way, some of you, you know, we started cleaning the community. While we have a mess, people are littering all over. The lives of our children are at stake here. We said instead of complaining, complaining to who? To people who don't even care about us. So we mobilized our church. We said on such and such a day, we are going to clean our streets. Mm. We are gaining our voice as the community, as the church. And you know what happened next? We saw EFF coming in. When I took a picture of the gravesite here at Moifontein, and I said, look what is happening at Moifontein, and then with the people who are littering right at the cemetery, I got an email mm. and, and a message from Julius saying, Rev, we are prepared to come and clean Moifontein with you. Mm. And boom, EFF, before we even arrived there, EFF was there cleaning the gravesite. Mm. You understand? And today now it has become a project of every political party. They are doing to gain the voters. I don't care as long as our community is clean. Let's take a lead in that area. That would be my take. Well, I'm going to ask the, the, the last question, Ref. Um, one of the leaders is asking here, saying, Ref, what can be done to unite the body of Christ? I You know, it really breaks my heart, Bazalwan. It really breaks my heart. I don't want to say things that will offend other people. You know, you, you run meetings like this. Mm. Somebody will come up with a mentality, no, he wants to be our boss. Mm. You understand? Um, you put a fee. You know, mm. because running something like this would generate the whole day, the diesel. Mm. It's a lot of money. You put a fee. It's like he wants to enrich himself. You know, that is why when we do these things now, we just do them. Because we want to unite the body of Christ. But the thing that makes the body of Christ not to be united, I think is the spirit of jealousy. Mm. Spirit mm. of jealousy is the key. Mm. And, and to be short-sighted. Yeah. You know, when you are short-sighted, you don't see the bigger picture. You only see here. Mm. It becomes a problem. But if you see a bigger picture, you'd realize that we are stronger and better together. together. I mean, I'm looking at this row right here of, this, of these pastors. You understand? You've got Pastor Muluzi here. He's pastoring a big church in Tembisa. So you've got Mangani. We've got Koketo together with his wife. Now you've got Colin. God is using that young man. He's a great singer, you know, and all that. Imagine having these resources here. You don't even have to struggle in the near future to get a speaker if you have a conference. Mm. Because you can have a speaker among us here. You understand? We can build the body of Christ together. But when we are short-sighted and you think, if I'm going to invite my table, my table, I was is in Vuzami. We have one, is in Vuzako. We have one problem, is in Vuzako. You know, and, 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 all, and, and all those things. So, those are the things that makes us not to be uh, united. I don't know. Mama, do you have another thing? I don't know you. you I'm, I'm asked. Well, you, uh, you asked me to answer as well. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man under, under authority. authority. I'm giving you authority now. We, 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 we would like to reach out to leaders who are saying we want to see a difference in our nation. People who are hungry for action, people who will be aggressive with action, to write to us, we want to form a group out of this group that we can start driving projects together. When we say we are doing a cleaning campaign, um, HRM is doing cleaning campaign in this area, CFC in that area, on that one day we then have a powerful campaign that goes across, across the nation. Yeah. But we are saying, Let's then start that journey together. So, Mfunisi, through you, 
maybe we, we reach out to the leaders. We have our contact details. Write to us and say, we are ready for action. We are hungry for action. And we have the, 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 the abilities for action. And ability here is us just being available. And if you are that, that leader, write to us. We form that group. And we start having these projects together. And we know that we can reach our nation together. Yeah. I think that's great. That's great. We, we're really open to that, Bazalwana. We, we feel God has raised us as a ministry for such a time as this. And then we'd want to partner with churches so that we can impact our communities. So if you want to be a part of that, we'll definitely uh, love to join ventures with you. Where we are able, we'll put Ile um, uh, systems in place. Can I also give one example? The power of unity. Hmm. How I wish I could have prepared some slides for that. Um, we have what we call People Matter Foundation. People Matter Foundation. I would have named that foundation as Matebula Foundation. foundation. Hmm. But it is bigger than me. Hmm. It's just like the gift of the givers. It's not for Suleiman. Yeah. You know, it is a bigger picture. So People Matter Foundation is the same concept with the gift of the givers. It's a vehicle hmm. that we want to push God's agenda. Hmm. Oh, the, the, the church of Jesus, the body of Christ, has been there when there's a crisis. Oh, man, we want to go and deliver tons and tons of water, a Haman scrub. Yeah. You understand? It shouldn't be, be Hope Restoration Ministry that is doing that. It should be the body of Christ hmm. that does that. There was a meeting where I proposed to pastors. I said, you know, can you give us 100 rand, 200 rand monthly? Mm. And then we run this vehicle, People Matter Foundation, mm. as the vehicle for the body of Christ. Let me tell you, if I can tell you who are the people sponsoring People Matter Foundation, it's white churches mm. and two or three black churches. The rest is white churches. Who are believing that? Our brothers? No. And ask me who are the beneficiaries? Of them. <laughs> Same guys. Hmm. You understand? So I really don't know. And uh, we're saying 100 rand, 50 rand, put into people met. I don't take even a cent. No. Not even a cent that hmm. comes to, 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 to Matebula. Not even a cent that goes to Hope Restoration. The people who are serving in People Matter Foundation, they are paid from the payroll of the church. Every cent that comes in there does the work. Does the work hmm. Because that is what the Lord said I must do and we don't take any cent. So we are saying even to all of you, that is another vehicle that we can use. You know wherever you see People Matter, you can say, I am a part of that. I am a part of that. What is the only organization that is recognized by the government in South Africa? Gift of the givers. Mm. When there's a problem, even the government, when they want to release money, they trust who? Gift, Gift of the, the givers. givers. Where's the church? Mm. Nowhere to be found. Mm. You understand? Mm. So I'm saying, let us begin to see beyond ourselves and begin to look at the bigger picture. 100 rand as the church. Mm. 200 rand as the church. Towards People Matter Foundation. It will go a long way. And the future and the vision for People Matter Foundation mm. is that if we have people at Deben, we'd love to have an office at Deben. Let the people at Deben run a, a People Matter Foundation. Mm. At Cape Town, Northwest, this thing is bigger than me. That is why I did not attach my name into it. Mm. It must go on even if I am not there. You understand? And I even said to other pastors, we can even choose a director. Move me out and I'm prepared to raise funds. I'm going to Chicago now, August. I'm going to raise funds. Guess who has people have invited me to, go and, to come and speak there? Hmm. Global Leadership Summit. I'm going to Global Leadership Summit. Sure. God has opened that door. They said they would love me to also speak about People Matter Foundation. Hmm. I'll put it there. It is not my baby. It's for the body of Christ. I just pray. African people, it is time. We have been doing this mm. for too long. We have been doing this for too long. Mm. It is time for us to play our part. 
and make a change in this nation. Love Hallelujah. He's a man who's very passionate about this. We could talk the whole day because I was supposed to ask him what are some of the current People Matter Foundation projects, where is the team now, what are they establishing there? Sure. There is a lot happening and it's all for the body of Christ. We have a team that is in Zerast setting up a sewing school for the community there. Um, that is the People Matter Foundation. We, we, it's, it's really about the, 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 the people of God. We are building houses yeah. for the destitute. And I don't even know these people. They are not related to me. Mm. But because there's a need, we come in, we build a house. We now have a bakery where we are baking bread because it's a tough season. The bread is very expensive for ordinary people. Mm. We are saying instead of buying bread for 22 rand, yet you don't have that 22 rand, we're going to reduce the size, the price of a bread. You can buy bread with 10 rand. You understand? Mm. So that people can survive. These are God's people. So we have Ilendozani, a bakery now, and the projects... They just keep on coming on and the on. Eggs. And now we've got chickens that lay eggs. We are saying we can't just give people bread without eggs. So we are blessing them now with bread and eggs. The chickens, they lay eggs. <laughs> and all this for the body of Christ. And some of these eggs we're handing over to pastors who are really pulling hard. You know, ministries that are pulling hard. We say, Ki Omai, and then just see what you can do. So, please be a part of that. Would love to impact the nation. Amen. Well, thank you, Rev. Amen. And uh, for being a blessing and sharing your heart with us. Come on, appreciate him. Thank you. Thank you.